You're watching the ZNS Network, the people station. I don't know, but there's all kind of cars in this parking lot. I ain't even know where to park. Yeah, just don't park in the parking space. Like you ain't got nowhere to go. Don't park in. Just don't park in the parking lot. Yeah, that's on the gas. No, I ain't got park in the parking lot. I could be that long. I could be that long. On the gas, watch it. Wait, what's going on, now? Oh, I tell you we shouldn't park here, not a spray park here. I tell you we shouldn't park here. No, 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 no. My bad, big, my bad, big bro. And he get a stick inside this thing. This model, we gotta move. This is a honey gas. But we gotta move. move. Don't leave me right now. Sorry. Be considerate. Don't use disabled parking spaces without a decal in your vehicle. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the news, the clock is ticking. Will the Grand Bahama Port Authority pay up? We have the latest. Right now, the Bahamian people are paying for services in Grand Bahama and the port, for which the port should be paying for. Should we continue that? Plus, the body of a man discovered on a local golf course. And an Abaco woman is seeking assistance after losing her home to a blazing fire. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Azure Quant. Thank you so much for tuning in. As the dispute between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority continues to unfold, all attention is squarely focused on Grand Bahama. The government has issued a detailed account to the GBPA, citing an alleged debt of $357 million owed to the Bahamian people, with a 30-day ultimatum for payment. With time ticking away, our Romico Knowles has the latest from the Prime Minister on this ongoing matter. 30 days. That is the time given to the Grand Bahama Port Authority to pay over $300 million to the government for services rendered. While the clock is ticking away, and according to the nation's leader, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, what is expected to happen now is a meeting between the government and the GBPA's attorneys. There's a scheduled meeting to, to, to at least uh, settle the basis for going forward, either in this respect to how the issues are resolved and the process to resolving those issues and those conversations are to be held very soon. Responding to questions about the possible economic implications of the dispute on Freeport, the Prime Minister believes now is the time to ensure the GBPA fulfill its obligations under the Hawksbow Creek Agreement. The government is doing what the Port Authority ought to be doing by the arrangements that was added into in the Hawksbow Creek Agreement. And if they are doing it, then what, what is the role of the Port Authority? As you may recall, these latest developments stem from a meticulously crafted report prepared by PricewaterhouseCoopers outlining reimbursements owed to the government amounting to $357 million, covering the span of the last five fiscal years. The Bahamian people could no longer afford to subsidize the Port Authority. In response, early this month, the GBPA issued a statement rejecting the claim, stating that it came on the heels of a recent proposal by the government to purchase the whole port group, which owns GBPA. BPA. With the 30-day deadline swiftly approaching, they have not retracted their statement. I'm not aware of any stance change. I, I know that um, the lawyers are now talking. The government's position originates from what Prime Minister Davis says are unmet promises on Grand Bahama by the GBPA, and he says it's now time for a paradigm shift. Right now, the Bahamian people are paying for services in Grand Bahama and the port for which the port should be paying for. Should we continue that? Now, once the 30-day deadline is up, arbitration proceedings are expected to commence. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Ramiko Knowles. 
Meantime, for one Bahamian investor, he says the dispute between the Grand Bahama Port Authority and the government has not placed a halt on his plans to expand a popular restaurant to Grand Bahama. In this report, Tropical Gyros, a beloved Nassau-based restaurant chain, shares why now is the time to invest on this island. The details on the new location in this next report. We need Bahamians themselves to reinvest in our country, and so we looked at this as an opportunity to, to come to Freeport to see what we can do. Chef Kevin Colmer, the mastermind behind Tropical Gyros, excitedly speaking on the expansion to Freeport, recognizing the recent surge in investments on Grand Bahama as a key motivator for this move. I've been watching the, the government and the port seem to be moving vigorously to bring more investment into the country. We want to be a part of that growth. We don't want to come in after it's reach the trajectory point again and you know we want to say no we want to be part and parcel you know um a company that has also assisted in bringing Freeport back. Chef Calmer also expressing awareness on the ongoing saga between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority. However, he remains optimistic about the future and is determined to contribute positively to the local economy. My whole position on this is that I believe that they're going to come to a decision uh, that's going to be amicable because they both recognize the need each other for Freeport to truly be the, the, the city it can be. Founded in 2015 during the World Relays, Tropical Gyros has been on a steady rise with two successful locations in New Providence. But what makes this eatery unique and special? The sauces and seasonings are all unique. I've created by myself. We have all Bahamian Caribbean flavors. And, um, and we offer the gyros as well as our bowls, our tropical bowls and our salads that have become a seem to be a great hit in Nassau. It's unique, you know, it's the, the, the infusion of the tropical flavors. It's like nothing you've tasted before. Known for their commitment to exceptional customer service and mouth-watering flavors, the family-owned business is eager to extend their hospitality to the residents of Freeport. The relationship between people or products is important. When you're providing a service, I'm not just giving you an item, I'm giving you a relationship. So it's just as important to us and to me to provide consistent service as it is to provide consistent products. With the opening of their newest location at the Old Marianne's, Tropical Gyros is on the lookout for up to 30 new employees to join their team. The job fair will be held on Saturday, April 20th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the restaurant's new location. We're just asking persons to remember to bring their resumes, the right attitude, right willingness to learn, enthusiasm for the role, that they are coming to apply for, and a little bit of knowledge, if they can, about tropical gyros. Switching gears now, in response to ongoing concerns regarding the foul odor emanating in Pinder's Point, Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, is assuring residents that measures are being taken to address the issue and notes that the odorous problem previously tackled through engagement with Buckeye saw a solution implemented in the past, resulting in improved air quality. Some time ago, under one of our previous administration, we did engage Buckeye and those. Census was put in, uh, in strategic locations to be able to monitor the quality of the air, and, and, and that was one of the solutions that we arrived at at that time. What has happened since then, um, in only, in only in recent time, that we are hearing uh, a, a, what I call a new outcry. The Prime Minister says that assessments by the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources are imminent and gives his commitment to addressing the environmental concern for the well-being of residents. I know that we addressed it at, at some point in time. Uh, under one of our last, one, under one of our administration, and the solution was arrived at, uh, which included the, the placement of sensors to be able to monitor the quality of the air um, that uh, that was that was in the in the area, and uh, and that was what has been happening, and the quality there was being monitored. Now, what is happening today? I don't know. All those issues will be looked into by the Ministry of uh, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Health. 
In other news, a body found on a local golf course on Grand Bahama early Friday morning. Tonight, police officials are investigating the circumstances surrounding this discovery and are asking anyone with any information to come forward. Shalia Roll has the details in this report. Police officials on Grand Bahama making a shocking discovery on Friday morning. It was at this pond at the Reef Golf Course where a body was found to partially submerged. Now, authorities are diligently piecing together the details surrounding this puzzling incident to identify the victim and unravel the circumstances surrounding their demise. Officers responding to a call shortly after 8 a.m. Friday morning where police officials confirmed that an adult male was found partially submerged in a body of water located on a golf course in the Port Lucaya area. After retrieving the body from the water, a hearse was called to the scene. Emergency personnel making the official call by pronouncing the victim dead. Our ZNS News team spoke to Chief Superintendent Darrell Ware Sr., who says that there were no visible signs of trauma to the body. What person was brought out of the water, a check was made of the body. We saw no physical injuries per se. As police officers combed the scene, they were able to give a clear description of the male. This male was clad in a red shirt, uh, blue jeans, he had on a red and white tennis. Uh, seemed to be an LD person over the age of 40. Now, as this investigation is in its preliminary stages, no identification has been made. However, with an alarming number of missing persons on the island, Detective Superintendent Darrell Ware is making this plea. Again, I'm appealing to the Grand Bahamut community who may have a loved one lost to reach out and try and notify if they have this uh, poison mask to find out who this, the, identity, the identity of this poison. Meanwhile, investigations continue to identify the victim and the exact cause of death. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shalia Rule. Thank you for that, Shalia. In news from the crime beat, police on Grand Bahama are questioning three individuals, a 30-year-old resident of Grand Bahama, along with two Jamaican women, age 35 and 25, in connection with an armed robbery involving a couple. Preliminary reports revealed that shortly before 4 a.m. on Thursday, April 18th, officers were notified of gunshots in the area of Melbourne Crescent. Once officers arrived on the scene, it was discovered that a man and a woman who were sitting in a vehicle were robbed at gunpoint of a substantial amount of cash and other personal property. The unidentified gunman was able to escape in nearby bushes. However, the matter remains under active investigations by the Criminal Investigations Department. Well, an Abaco woman is reaching out to the public for help after a devastating fire raised her home and restaurant over the weekend on that island. Speaking with our Shalia Roll, the woman shared her profound sorrow, revealing that this is the second time she has faced the heartbreak of losing everything to flames. Here's our story. In the dead of night, flames tore through an Abaco woman's restaurant and home as she was serving her late night customers following a junk canoe rush out on the island. Dakiri Sands Bell is feeling devastated as she lost her livelihood and home due to a grease fire that started in the restaurant connected to her home. So it started from a grease fire. And because um, due to Dorian still trying to survive, I lived, I lived in the restaurant. So it was like the restaurant in the front. And the way I say it was in the bar. And where the fire sound was midway. So that's why I didn't get anything. I say everything burned, even what we made that day, because it happened so quick. This being the second time the business owner has lost her business to fire, she firmly asserts that there is a glaring lack of equipment on the island to effectively combat fires. We need a fire engine here. Now on the path to rebuilding her life once again, Sands Bell is appealing to the public for assistance to aid in this process. I need wood. I just need material. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shalia Rule. Now, if you want to assist Sands Bell, you can contact her at 577-7093. When we come back, we have the highlights of the groundbreaking ceremony of CG Atlantic, a major milestone for the company. That story and more when The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, continues. Hear that? 
If you listen closely, you can hear the heartbeat of a nation. That unique sound of a great country pounding with colorful history, a rich culture, and unwavering ambition. When you look around, you recognize its pulse. The people who love to celebrate, who identify with triumph. A people who know how to be our brother's keeper. Commonwealth Bank, built by Bahamians, here for Bahamians. Bahamians helping Bahamians. The Grand Bahama Port Authority, in conjunction with the Grand Bahama Tourism Board and others, brings you Freeport Business Expo, May 2nd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Grand Lacayan Resort Convention Center. Register today at FreeportBusinessExpo.com. Jealous. Mother's Day is coming up, and I'm thinking about upgrading my kid's mother's kitchen. Man, I thought your, your children's mother was married to another man. You have to know when to let go. This is powerful. You know what? I'm going to upgrade my wife's kitchen for Mother's Day. I am sure she would love that. I think so too. Check out Cornet Bahamas. They're having a pre-Mother's Day sale, 35% off store-wide starting April 16th to May 16th. The Sandy Port Plaza, Freeport, Albuquerque, and Ilu. It's springtime, and Grand Bahama Tiles is having its biggest clearance sale of the year with the 15 to 70% off all tiles in stock. For two days only, this Friday, April 19th through Saturday, April 20th, come in and save big on their only clearance sale of the year. Clear out that old tile and bring in the new with Grand Bahama Tiles Spring Clearance Sale. Call them at 352-7920. Some restrictions apply. We're down to the grand finale. We've been working long, hard. Everything has been unexpected, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect today. We don't know if it's weightlifting or cardio, but whatever it is, we just can take it on head first. We know coming to this competition, we come in to win it all. Your number one news team covering the North. Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The opening ceremony of CG Atlantic drawing scores of residents and stakeholders to their front lawn, marking a significant milestone for the company. The nation's leader, alongside a host of government officials, gracing the occasion with their presence. Our Romico Knowles was on the scene and brings us the highlights from the ceremony. Five years and two months since breaking ground, CG Freeport Three, officially opening. Two, one. Dr. Grant Gibbons, chairman of Coral Isle Group of Directors, says the expansion of their offices in Freeport signifies another stride in their commitment to enhance services for customers in the Northern Bahamas. CG Freeport reflects CG's commitment to the communities we serve. It also fits very nicely with our stated purpose as a company to deliver superior insurance solutions and services that enhance lives and security in an uncertain world. The new building, a Class A structure, is hailed as the first of its kind in decades on Grand Bahama with a total construction cost of $5.3 million. It was also designed so that in the event of another Hurricane Dorian, we can be up and functioning the following day. Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, extending congratulations to CG Atlantic, highlighting the company as a commendable representation of Grand Bahamians. And as we increase investments on this island, we expect to attend many more openings in the near future as the economy of Grand Bahama rebounds. CG Atlantic faced numerous challenges in his plan to fully solarize the building. However, the Prime Minister assured the company that these obstacles have been addressed. Those limitations, those hurdles, are no longer there. We must explore, we must explore ways for local stakeholders to adapt and address barriers to empower the people of Grand Bahama. The ceremony concluded with the Prime Minister touring the building's interior, designed by Sean Strawn of Cantonesia Designs. Additionally, at the back of the building is a garden space created by Greenlight Tropical Farms. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Romico Knowles.
Thank you, Ramiko. This year's slate of SACME competitions officially coming to a close. This time with schools competing in a math and science competition at the St. George's Gymnasium. Approximately 15 schools competed across the primary, junior and senior divisions, winning the math competition in the primary division was Lewis Yard, while Bishop Michael Eldon's school won both the junior and senior division. Here's president for SECME Northern Bahamas, Olivia Roll. It caused children to put in some research. For example, when we had the science fair, they had to look up inventors. With the DA math, students have to know how to add, how to multiply. Even with the integers, there were some negative numbers. So all of that caused them to use a lot of skills in school. We usually have nine competitions and we were able to do eight out of the nine. We, the only one we didn't do was the mousetrap car because right now it's, it's late in the school year. Everything is coming up at us right now. But overall, I rated a success to have eight out of nine competitions completed. Mary Starb, the Sea Catholic Academy winning would win both the primary and senior division categories for the math and science quiz, while Bishop Michael Eldon came away winners of the junior division. This portion was seen as a great tool to help the students with national exams on the horizon. The competition is based on three different areas of STEM subjects like health science, general science and mathematics. Right after this, we're going to have the math and science competition at a senior high school level. There we're going to have four different subjects, math, physics, chemistry, and biology. So these are all STEM subjects. Whatever the kids prepare to do well in these competitions, they will also help them to perform well in the national exams. Now Mary Star of the Seas primary and senior champions are in the nation's capital where they are set to compete in the 14th annual IBS Build a Bridge competition. We wish them the best of luck. A look at the weather forecast is coming up, but first, here is our Jay Philippe with the latest on sports. Well, coming up in sports, primary school track and field and tennis don't go away. Sports is right after this break. We all need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. For two decades, Flamingo Air has soared above the Bahamas, connecting our islands with pride and passion. As we rise above our challenges, we stand tall, resolute in our commitment to excellence. Thanks to your unwavering support, we have recommitted ourselves to making every trip an experience to remember. Flamingo Air, committed to safety and service. Time. And Grand Bahama Tiles is having its biggest clearance sale of the year with the 15 to 70 percent off all tiles in stock. For two days only, this Friday, April 19th through Saturday, April 20th, come in and save big on their only clearance sale of the year. Clear out that old tile and bring in the new with Grand Bahama Tiles Spring Clearance Sale. Call them at 352-7920. Some restrictions apply. Have questions for Grand Bahama Power Company? Get insights and answers to the power concern every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Tune in and power up your knowledge with Axe GBPC. I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to sports. Two big events happening in sports. First, primary school track and field championships next week.
Primary School Island Sports Track and Field begins Monday through Friday next week, April 22nd through the 26th at the Grand Bahama Sports Complex. For the first time, we'll be hosting 25 schools. We have over 750 primary school athletes that will be participating this year. Uh, events are the big three divisions. We have big schools, we have the middle schools, and we have the small schools. We want all parents to come out and support our kids over the next week. It's going to be exciting to watch these little darlings compete. We recognize the importance of sports in shaping our future leaders. We are thrilled to partner with the GBPSAA for the third year to support this sensational event that brings together primary school athletes from across the island to complete, compete in various track and field events. Well, here we are once again um, supporting our young people, seeing who will defend the title against the Hornets. I think that's the Hugh Campbell Hornets who would have won 10 consecutive championships here with the primary school island sports. And so we look forward to the competitiveness amongst our primary schools on the island. On Thursday and Friday, but we are inviting grade one, two, and three on Thursday. And so there will literally be hundreds of students, not only on the track, but those in the stand who are shouting and saying, come Hugh Campbell, come Maurice Moore, come. And so we're really, really excited about this entire event. Switching gears now in sports, night league tennis got underway at the Grand Lucan Tennis Court this past week. Matches will be played on Mondays and Wednesdays for the next five weeks. This is a group of like-minded tennis persons, uh, whether they be juniors, recreational players, coaches, you name it. If tennis is the love, this is the event. There was not enough recreational tennis play, but structured recreational tennis play, and the initiative just came just from pure love of the game, you know, and just wanted to spend more time on a tennis court in a social atmosphere beyond the hours of, say, 5 o'clock, giving other persons an opportunity who wouldn't ordinarily play, you know, in daylight. Uh, perhaps nighttime might work for them. Ladies and gents, that is your quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. As always, be blessed. Thank you, Jay. Now, here's a check on your local weather forecast, sponsored by Royal Star Assurance. Our Facebook friend of the day is up next. Don't go away. It's your time to taste the grand life at the newly restored Prop Club Beach Bar and Grill at Grand Lucayan. Grand Bahamas Premium Sports Bar, Hangout, and Entertainment Hub. Available for special events. Stop in seven days a week and join the successful business professionals, sports fanatics, foodies, and friends at the most pristine stretch of beachfront in Freeport. The ultimate party spot. Prop Club Beach Bar and Grill. Now open seven Seven days a week, Monday to Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Thursday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to midnight, with special guest artists from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. There's also karaoke Friday, and on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, it's happy hour. Drinks and food specials at Prop Club, Beach Bar, and Grill, located at Grand Lucaya. Call us today to book your parties, weddings, and special events at Prop Club, Beach Bar, and Grill. Prop Club, Beach Bar, and Grill. It's springtime, and Grand Bahama Tiles is having its biggest clearance sale of the year with the 15 to 70 percent off all tiles in stock. For two days only, this Friday, April 19th through Saturday, April 20th, come in and save big on their only clearance sale of the year. Clear out that old tile and bring in the new with Grand Bahama Tiles Spring Clearance Sale. Call them at 352-7920. Some restrictions apply. Sean A. Miller-Wevo tying up, but it doesn't matter. It's gold for the Olympic champion. On May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Back down here, Fraser now coming through the field. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. Your number one news.
news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Pastor Kyle Maycock, you are our Facebook friend of the day. We also want to wish you a special happy birthday, and we hope that you are enjoying. And that's going to do it tonight for us here in the North. On behalf of the entire Northern Edition team, I'm Azure Quant, but to stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight continues. Tonight, the National Report, a renewed call to unite on crime. Diversifying tourism, rising concerns over sea levels, and in sports, the big red machine derailed. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. ZNS News is brought to you by the new BTC. Fiber is here. Faster, stronger, more reliable. Together, we are unstoppable. Switch today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Makushla Pinder, and this is The Bahamas Tonight, the national report. Thanks for tuning in. Grief coldness, emptiness, uncertainty. A bundle of emotions for families of murder victims. A traumatic journey loved ones of slain parliamentarian Donald Saunders have been on now for more than two weeks. Incidences like these prompting a leading clergyman to openly declare that the country has strayed far from God and the things of God. It's a line taken from the homily of Anglican Archdeacon Keith Cartwright, who this morning eulogized his son, a man whose life was said to have been promising. Corval Pyfram has the details of this morning's emotional state-recognized funeral at the historic St. Agnes Anglican Church. You raise me up. Archdeacon Keith Cartwright delivering the sermon at Don Saunders' funeral as both a spiritual leader and a father despite grieving, still able to bring laughter with stories of his son. He came and sat down and talked with me of his great desire to serve God even more. I got scared because I thought he was going to go for the priesthood. <laughs> but he wanted to get closer to God. 23 days ago, the life of Don Saunders was snuffed out, the victim of yet another senseless killing. In his eulogy, Archdeacon Cartwright told political leaders that now, more than ever, leadership is needed to deal with crime. Why I ask, why I ask today in this funeral service that my Prime Minister, Brave Davis, my leader of the opposition, Michael, cannot come together with all the churches, the civic organizations, the police, the crime specialists, the professors at the University of the Bahamas, the community leaders, and get a task force on course to fight crime together. emotional day for Saunders' grieving family. He leaves behind a wife and three children, his mother, siblings, and extended family. They are still grappling with shock, disbelief, and pain. His life taken so tragically, so suddenly. Political leaders both describing him as a remarkable patriot, a man who still had so much to offer. Dawn was a patriot and a nationalist. And while he rocked red, the truth is, Dawn loved all Bahamians. It did not matter which political persuasion you were a part of. Dawn was a member of the new generation of Bahamian leaders, filled with transformational energy to shake things up. The innovative spirit I often look for in promising young leaders who seem ready to take this country toward new horizons. 
Well, Don Saunders' funeral mass, there were repeated references to this proverbial village and the contributions that Don has made to this village. But there was also this sobering, chilling, even daunting reminder that this very same village that gave us Don Saunders is the village that also gave us the people that took Don Saunders' life away. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corvell Pyfram. While well, building on Archdeacon Cartwright's sentiments, Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernanda recently suggested a crime czar is key to addressing the country's crime woes. His comments coming as the council prepares to host a conclave to discuss the church's approach to more effectively fight this tormenting issue. Many of our organizations are doing great works in silo, but there are pebbles being thrown. But if we work together in one united Bahamas effort, We've done it for teenage pregnancy, we did it for drugs, we did it for all of these things. We need a national campaign. We want to repair the family, and if the church needs to be the organization to lead it, all goodwill, uh, Bahamians, next week, Tuesday, we will gather in our crime conclave as the Christian Council at Margarita. And if it is that I can galvanate the leaders of our country uh, to put forward an effort that is led by the Christian Council, we will lead it. Now, Bishop Fernanda declined to comment on what women's rights activists recently had to say. The group holds that the church has been a hindrance to advancing the overall fight against gender-based violence, largely marital rape legislation. The Christian Council president addressed the issue of rape specifically. As I've said before, uh, rape is rape, and we don't want to condone rape in any form. And so as a society, we must speak to predominantly our men and help them to realize no is no. And we must do better in protecting the vulnerable in our society. In more upbeat news this evening, Eleuthera's beauty, the hospitality of its people, strategic investments and air connectivity have all paid off. The island's robust growth in 2023 has so far continued into 2024, with February marking the highest number of foreign arrivals to Eleuthera in any single month. But according to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper, to continue this upward trajectory, critical infrastructural needs must be addressed. Case in point, the North Eleuthera Airport. It is completely embarrassing to see the numbers of tourists standing in the sun and the elements waiting to board their flights or coming off of their flights and I'm delighted to be able to tell you today that we're doing something about it. The work on the airside aprons and taxiway runway is expected to commence by fourth quarter, beginning firstly next quarter with geotechnical studies with shovels in the ground by the fourth quarter. The works and the construction of a new terminal are slated to be completed towards the end of 2025, but we have a hard deadline of 2026 for reasons I believe that we are all aware. Cooper adding that cabinet this week approved funding for various airport terminals. This funding will be available by July 2024, and most importantly, Naughty Luther is a part of this plan. We expect, and I reiterate, by the fourth quarter that shovels will be in the ground with respect to your new airport terminal. The tourism minister's visit to Eleuthera on the heels of his trip to the United Nations General Assembly's first ever sustainability week in New York City. As Corval Pyfram tells us, the deputy prime minister left pleased that there appears to be global commitment to ensuring the tourism sector remains strong. He also highlighted the significant role the Bahamas has played in sustainability and reminded larger nations of their role. Deputy Prime Minister and Tourism Minister Chester Cooper on his recent visit to New York City, where he addressed the UN Sustainability Assembly, underscored the Bahamas' leading role in the tourism sector. Sustainability, he told ZNS News on the sidelines of his UN address, may be the new global buzzword, but it is something the Bahamas has been doing for nearly half a century. It is our way of life, and unless we protect our environment as we are doing with our coral, our mangroves, 
on our seagrass. And unless we are getting our tourists into the small communities all across uh, the Bahamas, whether it's uh, Duncan Town, Ragged Island, or Mangrove Key, Andros, uh, we have to find a way so that our communities are empowered and our people feel the results of what we're doing. The Deputy Prime Minister continues to boast of the Bahamas' strong performance in the tourism sector with record tourist arrivals last year and a better than projected first quarter of 2024. His agenda at this meeting was to make the point that the Bahamas remains a resilient powerhouse and is open for business. Sustainability Week was really about how we get orderly growth how we ensure that we are improving the economy, but also improving the society and the communities in which we live and do so responsibly whilst preserving the environment. Regional neighbor Jamaica also experiencing a rebound in its tourism industry. Like the Bahamas, it too faced media backlash from recent travel advisories issued by the U.S. and Canada to their citizens about travel to both countries. Additionally, the region faces ongoing disruption from severe weather patterns, sea level rise and climate change, which is why Jamaica's tourism minister Edmund Bartlett is calling for the creation of a global tourism resiliency fund. It, this one is to focus on small countries in particular who are highly dependent on tourism but weakly resourced while being heavily vulnerable. DPM Cooper is resolute that the Bahamas is taking a proactive position in protecting its destiny, and in doing so, he assures that the focus is also on uplifting communities. And through the massive community tourism initiatives, uh, we're seeking to empower uh, economies in the various communities, focused heavily on advancing our culture and advancing heritage tourism. For Valpai from For the Bahamas Tonight. Now, beyond individual destinations, the concept of the orange economy is reshaping global tourism. Travelers are increasingly seeking experiences that go beyond the traditional attractions. Tonight, our Devante Hanna explores tourism in one of the world's biggest economies, New York City, and spoke with a performer who says the Bahamian economy can benefit through the orange economy. In the bustling world of tourism, a new trend is sweeping through destinations, entertainment. Like the performing arts capital of the world, New York, which sees millions that visit every year to be immersed in the high energy performances and culture of the performers like Jay Day, a break dancer for decades. We could come out here anytime, any day, come out here, dance, show our love. People who sad, they watch our shows and be like, I was sad, but since I watch our show, I'm happy. Its performances like JD's original Breeze team, which many tourists come to see each year. But it is also a way for artists to get discovered. I danced with KRS One, went to Africa, stayed for four months. We was out there in 94 after the apartheid was over. We was there on um, Canada, we was in Germany, Japan. We done did movies, commercials. So this our job. The performers say they're able to thrive thanks to a well-supported orange economy, which they say can help put heads in beds and cause thousands of hours of screen time across social media and even change lives. After I left Harlem and all that, I moved to the Bronx, the birth of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And then I taught my nephews and all of them how to do it. And I took kids off the streets and brought them out here to do what we do so they won't be in gangs or nothing like that. While the Davis administration has promised to bolster the orange economy and its blueprint for change, the only thing that has begun to materialize is its plans for the Performing Arts Academy. But for artists to thrive, they say they need the full support of those at the helm. Now we had to fight for that. Back in the days, I got arrested. Cops took our radios. They wouldn't let, let us do it out here. So that's what made us start going like other places, like Boston, like Miami, like Florida, like Vegas. And they gave us the love, but we couldn't get that here. But then uh, policing them, they start giving us as the years go by. 
you know what I'm saying, start giving us a platform. And as they turn tonight, thousands will come to Times Square to witness one of the street performances, take photos, take videos, and it's a sign that perhaps strengthening our tourism product could lie within bolstering our orange economy. From New York City for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Devontae Hanna. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis responding to those audited reports into last summer's two big sporting events, the Carifta Track and Field Championship and the Bahamas Games, that reportedly came in millions of dollars over budget. When pressed by reporters today, the Prime Minister said this. I've not seen the report, of course, and uh, I have not had the opportunity yet to discuss it. The only thing I know is that when I reached out to the Minister of Sports, he indicated to me that he was unaware of the, of the report, and there may be some explanation as to what they call an overshoot. Sports Minister the Honorable Mario Bulleg insists there should have been a conversation with himself, ministry executives and the Auditor General to respond to the audit's results. An aggressive push to increase vaccination rates. That and more when the Bahamas tonight returns. This portion of the news is brought to you by Full Call Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. It has the looks the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of. Now it's here. Commonwealth Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly approval. It's a service that just comes naturally to us, just like how love of tradition comes naturally to you. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. to different KFC menus to see if the flavor can enhance any moment. And at the first bite, the party began. We repeated the experiment during the day, during business hours, on weekends, with sunshine, with rain. It's confirmed any moment can be a KFC moment. boss man was saying in the back there just now. About what? The luncheon? Why are you always worried about food? No. About how we gotta pay a little more for national insurance. Mildred, you talking fool. I can't afford to pay that. And you're always crying for him out. It ain't gonna be much. Boss still gotta pay. Voice of July 2024. I think that terminal benefit is what did help my boy Tony mm -hmm. through the pandemic. That same unemployment benefit. And guess what? What? Susan, <laughs> I think she'd get a pregnancy benefit, eh? You mean maternity benefit, eh? So now, we gotta do our part to make sure we get our pension. All right, well, let me try and go back to our juicy boss. <laughs> Best of the best. Keep the vibes alive. Music group. Alpha Sound Promotions presents the best of the best. Looking straight explosion. As we ignite the grounds of Super Club Breezes. KB. Gino D. Funky B. Veronica Bishop. Ozzy. The Morallanders. Elon Moxie. Shine 242. Get your tickets now. Available online at BahamasETickets.com or swing by the Beauty Shack on Soldier Road and Carmichael Road. And we're not done yet. The Falcons, Shag Collie and the VIVs, Pat Ramey, Stevie S, Johnny Cake, Iron Store, Nobi, Mama D, and Nishi LS. Sky boxes and sky bars available. Call 3940819. The best of the best break and scrape explosion takes over at 6 p.m. May 11th at Super Club Breezer. 
Officials of the Pan American Health Organization are keen on boosting regional vaccination numbers, and this in the face of research showing that 15 out of every 100 children in the Americas, including the Bahamas, are only partially protected against vaccine-preventable diseases. As vaccine week nears, the hope is to reach more than 80 million people with 156 million doses of vaccines. Jiminita Swain tells us more. The Pan American Health Organization making a case for its members in the region to push for vaccination coverage. The need arises out of a significant decline in regional vaccinations for numerous reasons. Among them, the false perception that diseases that have been eliminated or controlled do no longer pose a risk to people's health. Vaccination programs as a priority have been reduced and health services have not adapted their vaccination offerings to current demands in lifestyles and lifestyles in a way that facilitates access to people. PAHO Director Dr. Jabers Barbosa, who took the lead in a press briefing Thursday, further noted that while anti-COVID vaccination have also led to hesitancy in other vaccinations, but there have been some improvements. Thanks to the enormous effort made by countries in recent years, we have been able to recover our coverage rates to pre-pandemic levels. For example, we reached 91% coverage for the first dose of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. Results like this are encouraging on our road to recovery. The director stresses, though, that despite improvements, this remains. By 2022, 1.2 million children younger than one had never received a dose of the vaccine. Meanwhile, 2 million children under the age of one, that is to say 15 out of every 100 children, remain only partially protected against vaccine-preventable diseases in the region. Moreover, in terms of measles vaccines, we have not yet reached our pre-pandemic coverage levels, and this is of great concern. Given the rise in global measles cases worldwide and the highly contagious nature of this virus, Barbosa says the vaccination rate for girls 9 to 14 against HPV remains far below the 90 percent. Not at all good news as the vaccine protects against cervical cancer, a leading cause of death in women. As for what vaccination numbers look like locally, to date, our coverage for third DPT, diphtheria pertussis tetanus, which is the primary series of three doses that the children should receive before age one, sits at 86.5%. For the MMR, which is the first dose given at age one, is 80.5%. And our second MMR, which the second dose should be given by 15 months, is 65%. PAHO's appeal comes as the Americas prepares to mark vaccination week slated for April 20th to 27th. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Jiminita Swain. Well, thanks, Jiminita. With an extremely active Atlantic hurricane season brewing, it goes without saying that residents take the necessary precautions. As we've reported, this year's forecast calls for as many as 23 named storms, 11 of which will become hurricanes. Of that number, five are expected to become major hurricanes of Category 3 or above. A real scary thought for the Bahamas, which has faced challenges with sea level rises, rise and storm surges. You know, the Bahamas is a, a, we are low lying, so we don't have the mountains, you know, like, like other countries may have. So what that that makes us quite vulnerable, especially when it comes to storm surge. We have seen the devastation that actually storm surge can do to us because we are so flat. What that allow now is now for the storm surge to go even further inland. So the more powerful these storms are, especially depending on which area they're coming from, we can expect um, more storm surge. So as a country, because of our low Low lying, we are we are we are very vulnerable to storm surge. We are also very vulnerable to excessive rainfall. But National Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan warns that sea level rise and storm surges are not the only concerns.
We also know that a warmer atmosphere holds more moisture and is increasing rainfall totals and rainfall rates, which is worsening flooding from rainfall as well. The impact on the number of storms, on the intensity of storms from a warming climate is not as well understood at this point. In bustling New York City Tuesday night, a Bahamian stood proudly to receive top honor, honors from an international non-profit organization at the 2024 British Ball. Our Devante Hanna brings you the story of Lowell J. Mortimer, a distinguished individual honored for his exceptional contributions to the Bahamas and the world. It was a night to remember, as Bahamian diplomat and philanthropist His Excellency, the Right Honorable Lowell Mortimer received the Commonwealth Award during the St. George's Society of New York's British Ball. I am um, just extremely flattered to receive the honors, as well as um, being, feeling privileged. At the heart of the ball, an atmosphere of sophistication and celebration filled the air as guests gathered to honor two individuals who spurred national development. Among them, Mortimer stood out poised to receive the prestigious award for which he was grateful. My honors are all due for the support I get. Friends and family, any projects I, in, I do, they have been very supportive of it. So it's not been me alone. With a contingent of nearly 50 Bahamians, there was nothing but kind words from Mortimer, who received a standing ovation on the night. He's a philanthropist in the Bahamas. He's done so many great things. He continues to contribute to charity. He's an outstanding Bahamian, a patriot of the highest order. And the thing that I admire about him so much is he does a lot of works quietly. You don't even know who he's helping what he's doing. Those sentiments echoed by Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Fred Mitchell and Council General His Excellency Leroy Major. He's developed uh, these connections around the world which has enhanced uh, the well-being of our country and he has an amazing talent for spreading that uh, largesse, that support uh, around the country, uh, enhancing our institutions. He's a man of integrity, a man of honor, and um, it's an honor to be a part of this. And I'm so happy that it's in the city that uh, I, I am privileged to serve. The nonprofit organization is near 250 years old, celebrating outstanding individuals of British and Commonwealth heritage who, according to Executive Director Joshua Mandelbaum, work in pursuit of ensuring the world is better for those in Anglo-Saxon communities. Commonwealth Ambassador, uh, the Honorable Geneve Brown Metzger, um, recommended His Excellency for his work in maritime education and his work in building Campbell Shipping Company and the education he's done there to really strengthen Within, um, that sector in the Bahamas and ensure that it remains healthy and vibrant. Over the years, he's helped people with disabilities, served as the principal for Mortimer & Co., and is the founder of the LJM Maritime Academy. But at 81 years young, what do you want your legacy to be? That I did my best for the Bahamas. In simple terms, that's what I would like my legacy to be and that um, the world or the Bahamas is better for the things I've done that it would not have been wasted. The high-end ball has been held nearly every year in New York City since 1770. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Devontae Hanna. Well, great job, Devontae. We still have more news to come, but Marcellus Hall has a look at what's coming up in sports. Marcellus? Coming up in sports for tonight, it was soccer time at the Roscoe A.L. Davies Field. We'll give you details as the BISS Soccer Championships all set. If you see news in the making, call ZNS News at 502-3800 or email us at ZNSNews at gmail.com. Yellow Elder Garden. Ali and her cousins listen to Grammy share tales. The 70s so sweet, with themed costumes and dancing feet. Then came the brass, reaching new heights. A symphony of Bahamian nights. The 2000s, the Yellow Elder, a symbol of pride. Grammy's legacy in view as Ali dances in her Yellow Elder costume. We are alive. 
who will wear the crown? The countdown is on for the biggest finale ever, and you can have a front row seat to witness it all. It's the crowning of the 2024 Miss Teen Bahamas International, Sunday, April 28th, 2024, at the Atlantis Theater Paradise Island, showtime, 8 p.m. Also expect a big announcement on finale night. That's the 2024 Miss Teen Bahamas pageant finale. Tickets VIP $65, general admission $50, and students with ID $35. Box office Divas Inc. West Bay Street. Miss Teen Bahamas pageant is brought to you by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, Star Apple, Wendy's, Titan Hospitality Group of Companies, From House Bistro, Zaymar Group, The Point, Western Air, Super Clubs Breezers, Atlantis Paradise Island, The Sugar Rush Lounge, and Strength Over Fear. Sean A. Milowimo tying up, but it doesn't matter. It's gold for the Olympic champion. On May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. Keep the Vibes Alive Music Group, Alpha Sound Promotions, present the best of the best Rick and Scrape Explosion. As we ignite the grounds of Super Club Breezes, KB, Gino D, Funky B, Veronica Bishop, Ozzy, The Borallanders, Elon Moxie, Shine 242. Get your tickets now, available online at BahamasETickets.com or swing by the Beauty Shack on Soldier Road and Carmichael Road. And we're not done yet. The Falcons, Shag Collie and the VIP, Pat Ramon, Stevie S, Johnny Cake, Iron Store, Nobi, Mama D, and Nishi LS. Sky boxes and sky bars available. Call 394-0819. The best of the best break and scrape explosion takes over at 6 p.m. May 11th at Super Club Breezer. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station. Open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. not an all an easy job but special needs children require extra attention Kendrick and Vanessa Knowles know that all too well as they are the parents of a five-year-old autistic son who's mild on the spectrum they shared their story with our Jiminy Desway autism affects one in every 54 children and for some parents the news is often a shock but many focus on getting the best possible care to improve developmental outcomes Kendrick Knowles is no different. My experience has been um, one that you're constantly learning um, the ins and outs of autism and you realize that it's not as bad as you thought it would have been. You always know that um, with, an, with a diagnosis like that your child could potentially grow up different socially specifically so that, that was a concern but um, Khalil is um, with the help of doctors at doctor's hospital and occupational therapy and behavioral therapy he's progressing quite nicely. From all indications the earlier a child on the spectrum receives care improvements are seen. Mom Vanessa who is also a doctor shed some light. Um, he was diagnosed at the age of two and due to her intervention she was able to ensure that we got therapy early so luckily for us Khalil 
child was born. He's a twin, so he had a brother that wasn't on the spectrum. We have a typical and an atypical child. And having them integrate together, I think, has helped, um, along with the help of early therapy. It's still a lot that you go through in terms of people not really understanding, you know, what it is to have a child with autism and some of the behavioral challenges and kinks you have to work through. As for interactions with her son? Initially, when it started off with Khalil, he was delayed verbally, right? So we couldn't talk. And then in terms of trying to communicate, he would experience degrees of frustration in terms of getting you to try to understand what it is he wanted. Or even now, in terms of school settings, like being able to say, hey, I'm not okay with this, or I'm frustrated. So whereas normal children may just verbalize it, and he has improved tremendously with speech therapy, uh, he would struggle. Knows that she simply wants people interacting with autistic persons to have patience and recognize that all children are not rude, but are working to communicate in their own way. Meanwhile, psychiatrist Dr. Petra Forbes says a number of management models are applied. So if they do have challenges with communication, you offer the speech and language therapy. If they have challenges with socialization, you can offer that behavioral therapy and increase their interactions at home. At the end of the day, as the old adage says, it takes a village to raise a child, even an autistic one, who is also looking for inclusion. For The Bahamas Tonight, I'm Jiminita Swain. Only a week to go before the deadline to submit applications for the Monroe Pinder Awards, which since 2014 has presented over $40,000 in financial assistance to students across the country. Those interested can apply online at www.themonroepinderaward.org. The deadline, April 26. A special awards banquet is scheduled for June 22nd to announce the winners. Secretary and Family of Faith Ministries, Pastor Ricardo Dean. Presently, we have three financial awards that we give to deserving students, uh, $5,000, $2,500, and $1,500. Uh, it is our hope that based on the uh, sponsorship that we expect to get this year, that perhaps those awards can be increased even this year. Uh, so presently, we're looking at Bahamian students only, and uh, those are students who are either in the 12th grade or first friend students in some tertiary organization. So, uh, institutions. So, um, those are the target areas we're looking at. And uh, these can be persons who are doing well academically. Uh, persons who apply must have at least a three point grade point average or above. Welcome this Saturday. The Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation will host its third annual Taste and Tell at the Western Esplanade. The event gives local food processors an opportunity to promote their products and compete for financial support from the Small Business Development Center. BAIC General Manager Troy Sampson says this year will offer even more exposure. With over or close to 50 vendors being participating this year, we are looking forward to seeing what Bahamian processors are doing in terms of food innovation, in terms of coming up with new products that can be uh, replacing imported items that is exciting for the public to now become aware of and to, be, to have an opportunity to sample, to taste, to purchase, and to tell everybody about the fantastic work Bahamian processors are doing. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supply is making the journey on their road to 25 years in business in an effort to show their customers and the general public they're appreciated. The establishment held an open house and fair. Free to the public, the fair offered up a display of some of the products offered. We wanted to open our house essentially to the open public and to those medical professionals that simply, you know, don't know everything that Bahamas Medical has to offer. So we wanted to, in a fun way, open our house to them. Well, still to come, our feature story of the night. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. There's more news in a moment. Jones.
Mother's Day is coming up, and I'm thinking about upgrading my kid's mother's kitchen. Man, I thought your, your children's mother was married to another man. You have to know when to let go. This is powerful. You know what? I'm going to upgrade my wife's kitchen for Mother's Day. I am sure she would love that. I think so, too. Check out Cornet Bahamas. They're having a free Mother's Day sale, 35% off store-wide starting April 16th to May 16th. The Sandy Port Plaza, Freeport, Albuco, and Ilu. Hey, Mom. Can you look after Kaylee? Sorry. I'll be out for a while doing my home and car insurance. What? You know there's a new way, right? A new way? Where have you been? Look, go to newerinsurance.com, log in, get your quote, buy your insurance, done. You can even use it to manage a plane. Oh? By the way, it's not NUA. It's N-U-A. Where's she been? Do it anyway with NUA insurance agents and brokers. We seem to remember our athletes when they make us proud at the finish line. Throw a junk in a parade when they return home, toss them a few and dollars. And then forget about them until the next Members time. of the prestigious Fourth Estate should never sell themselves to any politician. To keep their hands and noses clean. In order to publish or broadcast the unadulterated truth. Well, that's how I see it anyway. Read As I See It, exclusively at CNNSBahamas.com. New articles premiere on Mondays at 9 a.m. In 2023, Eleuthera's demand for power supply increased by 8%. While that may mean little to some, Works and Family Island Affairs Minister the Honorable Clay Sweeting attributes this to that island's resurgence. Despite no empirical data, Sweeting, who doubles as the Minister of Parliament, Member of Parliament rather, for Central and South Eleuthera, says residents can attest to the drastic uptick in property sales in development of second home market with the largest residential inventory of Airbnbs and VRBOs. It's against that very backdrop that he encouraged fellow Eleutherans to get ready for all that's about to come. So to the natives of Eleuthera that are near and far, the timing couldn't get much better than now to return home. There's room for big businesses, for medium-sized businesses, for small business and competitive markets. For the demographic that is seeking employment, jobs are available, but you have to apply. But if Eleuthera is to attract even more investors, basic infrastructure is key. In terms of immediate and long-term plans? In conjunction with my colleagues, steps have been implemented to mitigate disruptions in services and to respond to immediate issues that may arise. A long-term solution for electricity, and for water are being reviewed. And I anticipate that within the next budget period, these areas will be transformed. I have been guaranteed by the Minister of Health that we will begin the long overdue government medical facility in Palmetto Point. Has it has already been tendered and is scheduled to break ground ahead of the new budget period. All uh, technical drawings Everything that needs to be done within the Ministry of Works has been approved. Uh, the Ministry of Health completed the tender last week. So we anticipate um, them to award the contract and to break ground in May. Well, it's time now for a check on Family Island weather with Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Makisha. We have near clear skies this evening. Temperature warm, 79 degrees. Relative humidity at 64%. East southeast winds at six miles per hour. The barometric pressure, 1,017.7 millibars. That is 30.05 inches. And your temperatures around the farm violence this evening. Marsh Abba at 77, 78 in Grain Tool Key. Freeport, Grand Bahama also at 78 degrees. 80 degrees in the Berry Islands. Alistair Bimini, 76, 79 in Harbor Island. Rock Sound, Elutra, 78. 
28. Fresh Creek Central Andros at 80 degrees. Also, Kemp Space at Andros and Black Point Exuma reporting 80 degrees. Otterstown, Cat Island, 76, 75 in San Salvador. Rum Key, 77. Georgetown, Exuma, 80 degrees. 80s in Ragged Island, Clarentown, Long Island, and in Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, Maguana, 82, Acklands, 82, Matthew Tiny, Niagara, 80, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 80 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight right through Sunday in the northwest and central islands. You can anticipate a southeast to south flow speeds around 10 to 15 knots and away way fight to the four feet. Now, your low tide, that will take place at 18 minutes past midnight. High tide taking place at 622 tomorrow morning for the southeast. Bombers tonight through uh, Saturday. Sunday, pardon me, those winds easterly at 12 to 18 knots and away fights three to six feet, so small craft should exercise caution in the Southeast Bombers through Sunday. And uh, here now is your international temperatures, and they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. The news for your international temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. But stay tuned. The extended weather forecast is still ahead. Want to have your voice heard? Send your letters to the editor to digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. Share your thoughts on current events or positive stories within your community. That's digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. We want to hear from you. If you like it, you can find it at super value and quality supermarkets. Livy's Vienna Sausage, 4.6 ounce, 119. Hellman's Mayonnaise, 30 ounce, 779. Pickwell Tomato Paste, 6 ounce, 109. Fresh Limes, 3 for 139. Beef Short Ribs, 4.99 per pound. Find the foods you'd love at super value and quality supermarkets. For hurricane season, we got impact windows and doors. For protection, just come to our store. Plus, we got tiles to pretty up your walls and your floors. We love to bad enough for that big bad storm. For selling tiles, blank tiles, mosaic tiles, a variety of styles. Before teens get right, they gotta be proud. That's why we got the best deals in the whole Bahamas. Hey, hey. This is ZNS Total Sports. Well, welcome to your ZNS Total Sports Check on a Friday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall with BISS Sudden Death Playoffs. Getting started yesterday at the Roscoe A.L. Davies Fields. On the junior girls side, number one seeded QC Comets. They wasted no time with 14 to St. Augustine's as they derailed the Big Red Machine easily. 5-0 the final score. They advanced to the championship. We were on the other side of the junior girls bracket, St. Andrews Hurricanes. They outlasted the Windsor Dragons in a tightly contested battle 2-1, setting up the junior girls championship between QC and St. Andrews there. Junior boys, what a game between St. Andrews and QC. Is this one a defensive struggle the entire match? Top-ranked Hurricanes finally able to scrape out the 1-0 win. They will face off against the Windsor Dragons, who held off Sac squad 3-2 in another tight battle. Senior girls, one versus four, life at key, punching their ticket to the championship. They crushed Kingsway Academy Saints 7-0. They will play the win of the match between QC and St. Andrews. That's set for today. Final game of the evening saw life at key cruising by St. Andrews. Final of 7-2, they too a way to see their opponent as Windsor and St. John square off in the battle of two versus three on the senior boy side. New Province Basketball Association Division I Championship Series, they go to a decisive game five tonight. Reigning champions, Commonwealth Bank Giants with their backs against the wall, pulling off an 88-74 win over discount Liquor Rockets. That evens that best of five series two to two. 
at the Kendall Lodge's gym. Now, Adam Johnson led the way for the Giants. He had 24 points, 11 rebounds. Dylan Musgrove, 16. Jackson Jacob added 15. And Michael Furley Bain had 11. For the Rockets, Roosevelt Chicken Raleigh, he had 18 points. Levinston Munnings added 14 points, 15 rebounds. Crystal Store, he had 12. And Abel Joseph, 10 points, 10 boards. Decisive game, cut five, coming your way. That's going to be actually on Sunday at Kendall Isaacs. Masters Softball Association, Sudden Death Playoffs. They get started tomorrow. That's going to be at the Archdeacon William Thompson Park, or the government grounds, if you will. First game, 11 o'clock. Truckers taking on the boys there. 1 p.m., Scorpions versus the KC Raiders. And then at 3, Drifters playing the corner boys. And from baseball, another young Bahamian joining the ranks of professional baseball players, Rashawn Pinder. The latest to ink his name to a professional contract, the I Elite Prospect signing a deal to join the Texas Ranger organization at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium yesterday afternoon. And speaking of signings, local high school track standout Zaria Stapleton signing a letter of intent to attend St. Cloud University in Minnesota this fall. Stapleton will be the first Bahamian student athlete to attend the four-year institution. Zaria excited for the opportunity. It's honestly like a lot on me right now, but I'm happy that I can be proud of myself. I hope to be one of the best Bahamian athletes on the team, and I am the first Bahamian athlete on the team, and I just, I'm so proud that I could like represent my country and be the one, the main person to do it. As for her new head coach, also excited about this new addition to her program. She is the first athlete that I've ever recruited from the Bahamas for St. Cloud State. She is also the first athlete I've ever recruited from the Bahamas in, in all of my coaching career. And so I've had those, I've had, I've had so many um, fortunate opportunities to recruit and, and to coach with international athletes, but she is the first Bohemian I've ever coached, I've ever recruited. Um, and so I'm super excited to do collaboration work with her. And that's it. You check on sports for you here on this Friday. Of course, our Friday weather forecast is just around the corner. Stay with us. This is ZNS Total Sports. Health is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is the premier distributor of medical equipment, as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continue to be a trendsetter, an innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th Fifth Terrace Centerville and now located in the Lucaya Shopping Center of Freeport, Grand Bahama. Your one-stop shop for all things news and entertainment. Bringing you exclusive content from unique talents you can't find anywhere else. Keeping you updated with the top stories from across the nation. And entertained with a variety of engaging content. All in one place. With one click. You mean I can get all this in the palm of my hand? Yes. On all my favorite devices? Yes. And with unlimited access to all types of different content. You won't need to look anywhere else. That's ZNS Digital. That's ZNS Digital. That's ZNS Digital. That's ZNS Digital. ZNS Digital, the people station in your pocket. Time now for weather. In our final look at whether that area of high pressure will remain anchored across the Bahamas right through the early part of the week, maintaining some rather toasty days into the early part of next week. Tonight, we are looking at clear skies, 71 degrees for your low temperature. Tomorrow, it's going to be mostly sunny and uh, pretty warm at the high temperature of 82 degrees. Your extended weather forecast, lots of sunshine in the forecast right through the seven-day cycle. Nevertheless, there's a weak frontal system will go through uh, late on Tuesday, and that will pass through practically unnoticed with very little uh, weather. So 
associated with it. Temperatures are not going to change much either. We're going to keep you into the 80s right through a Thursday of next week, and then we'll start peaking up at 87 degrees as we head into the weekend of next week. Thank you, sir. Well, thanks, Basil. Where is Bingo? The mascot for next month's World Relays, that is. What we do know is that he was last seen at Queen's College. Charles Fisher tells us more. And the students goes wild as Bingo and members of the World Relays paid a call on Comet Land. All the kids having fun, and if you think it was only the kids having fun, game's mascot Bingo was right in his element. Queen's College can boast of having two student athletes part of the World Relay team pools, Jemiah Nabi 4x1 and Zion Miller 4x4. I'm very excited because if y'all didn't know, my season started off a bit slow and shaky, but this was my come up and I'm very glad I'm able to execute on a world stage. How do you feel you're going to perform against some of the big dogs in the world, so to speak? Uh, I think I'll compete well. I'm not scared. I fear none. If you breathe oxygen, then <laughs> it's, uh, it's fair competition. So I'll just pray that I can execute well. It's a big accomplishment. I praise God for all of it. I've had a rough season so far, so that I made it here today is a blessing. I pray that I go there and execute and represent my country in school the best that I can. And I pray that the Bahamas come out with a medal. And to have the World Relays Committee come to Comet Land and promote the games? It's a bit surprised. I was going to P class <laughs> and they just pulled me out of class. But uh, I think it's a good exposure um, promoting the games so the Bohemian people can come out and support. It feels good that everyone's here to support me. It's always a uh, good feeling to come out here and see that your school and country is supporting you, so it's special. That's what Nabi, the 2023 Grifter Sprint Champion, hoped to gain from this experience. Just want to feel the experience competing on that type of stage because I usually compete at junior meets. And so being around the older athletes, probably feed off their mentality and not just know what it feels like to be there. School's principal, Reverend Henry Knowles, receiving his tickets and happy world relays have the Comets in the mix. We are very excited. You know, Queens College is a sports powerhouse. Um, our students are phenomenal on the track, on the field, and we're excited. We have our students who did so well at Nationals, at Carifta, and now we're looking to help to represent as a nation in the world relays. And the day just could not end without Bingo challenging Zion and another student to a race. And guess what? He jumps the gun. Keep an eye out for Bingo. He may just be visiting your school or business pretty soon. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Charles Fisher. Oh, great story there, Fisher. And that does it for the Bahamas Tonight. Thank you for continuing to make ZNS your first choice for news and information. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. From all of us here at ZNS, thank you for watching and good night. I'm going to tell you we shouldn't park here, not a spray park here. I tell you we shouldn't park here. Don't no, get one of these three. My bad, big, my bad, big bro. And he got a stick inside this thing. This mod, though. We got to move. This is a honey gas. But we got to move. Don't. We can move right now. Sorry. Be considerate. Don't use disabled parking spaces without a decal in your vehicle. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities.
abuse, domestic violence, suicidal tendencies. Are you being stressed out from these problems? Call the National Hotline at 422-2763 or 322-2763. There are trained social workers available 24 hours to help you. Know that you are not alone in this. Diabetic eye disease is caused by changes in the blood vessels of your retina. This disease is the most common cause of vision loss among patients with diabetes and is the leading cause of blindness and visual impairment in working age adults. Symptoms of diabetic eye disease can include floaters in your vision, blurred vision, fluctuating vision, impaired color vision, or generalized loss of vision. Smoking can quadruple your risk of progression of this disease. Bottom line is, smoking will cause you to go blind faster with diabetes. So quit smoking. Also, for expectant mothers who are diabetic, it is very important that you have your eyes examined during pregnancy, as rapid changes can occur in your eyes during pregnancy. And remember, good eye health is a combined effort between your eye care team, your medical doctors, and you, the patient. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Public Hospitals Authority in conjunction with the Medical Association of the Bahamas and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It's just a joy to you know, help someone who is a needy, you know. I'm proud that to know that we are able to accommodate them with a hot meal, fresh meal, and a well-balanced meal. A lot of our clients, as you know, it's in the inner city and persons who really include them so much of the loss they do. And for whatever reason, um, two months, three months, they really don't have anything. We are not have some kind of kindness to do this. You're watching the ZNS Network, the people's station.